Sharon uh, was a young stroke survivor who initially after her stroke was really quite disabled um, and her recovery you know didn't happen immediately and so she was discharged from rehab into an aged care facility. Um, at that time she was in her 40s so you know it was really a very challenging time because somebody of that age is not um, often in an aged care facility or perhaps it's not the ideal location for them um, but she was really quite disabled at that point she needed at least two people to stand up and she couldn't walk at all. Sharon um, was discharged to an aged care facility that also had a rehab centre on site um, and due to um, NDIS and some private funding she had access to ongoing kind of physiotherapy sessions. I knew that the you know gold standard or best evidence was for high intensity task specific training um, and that's what we really wanted to implement with Sharon but it was very very challenging because of the impairments after her stroke. Um, her stroke resulted in many impairments that impacted but probably there, there are two that I will never forget that clearly stick in my mind. Um, the first one was Sharon had some problems with her cognition um, and that really, we noticed that in terms of her motor planning, even her ability to plan how to start or initiate a movement. Um, and so it was actually quite hard to get her to even attempt one or two reps of, um, of an everyday task. The second kind of major impairment um, was that she interestingly had some very severe spasticity in her affected leg, particularly in her hamstrings muscles, you know, to the point that when she tried to move, um, her knee flexed and she couldn't keep her foot on the ground. Um, so in standing up and then when she was able to, starting to walk, we had a major problem because we needed to work out ways to actually keep her affected leg on the ground so she could try to use it within the task. Um, and so it took, you know, in honest, honest answer, it took a number of weeks and it took some problem solving and some trial and error to really think about how we could make um, task specific practice part of her program and to make that as intensive as we possibly could. Um, and so the team worked together and we worked out pretty quickly that whole task practice worked way better than any part task due to her motor planning difficulties. And we needed to make that practice relevant where possible. You know, so if she was standing up, it would work better if we could give that a purpose. If she was, you know, standing up to do something that made sense to her. Um, and then when she started to walk, again, if we could give it a purpose, she was walking to somewhere, then it would make more sense to her um, than just walking for training. And with, and with her spasticity, which was really, you know, very severe, probably possibly, you know, one of the most severe cases I've seen, we actually, for a while, actually had to put a, um, zimmer splint on so splint her leg into extension we'd do that before she started to move um, when we could get her legs straight and then she you know we'd get her up into standing with that and we we're able to get her foot on the ground um, and you know what's very interesting is that you know as she practiced more her her ability to initiate movement and and start to move independently really improved um, and secondly her spasticity along with um, some early Botox treatment um, you know I think she had one or two rounds of Botox treatment but after that her spasticity resolved and actually on testing today um, there'd be no measure of spasticity in those muscles groups in her leg um, which is a really really interesting and fantastic outcome for her.
Um, so Sharon was a resident of the facility for a couple of years, um, though it probably over the first six to 12 months that we saw the major improvements. Um, between month six and month 12 was when she really kind of took off and started to be able to do things much more independently, um, start to walk around with an aid and then without an aid um, within the facility and then start to be able to go outside of the facility and, you know, go on outings with her family um, and access, you know, she actually really liked swimming. So she started to access a pool um, over time and activities she enjoys. Um, so that was fantastic. Um, she, the goal was always that she would be able to leave the aged care facility and go into um, a more appro age appropriate accommodation. Um, and she has now achieved that. So she did go home to live with her family. And now she's since moved um, into a um, supported independent accommodation. And watching her walk around today, I still have to remind myself just how disabled she was at the beginning. Um, and, you know, I guess the persistence that myself and the team needed to put in place in order to achieve um, evidence-based practice and ultimately achieve a really good outcome for Sharon. This campaign is supported by World Physiotherapy and physiotherapy organisations in Australia, Italy, France and the Netherlands. Please join us in the Pedro Tackles Barriers to Evidence-Based Physiotherapy campaign and help tackle the biggest barriers to evidence-based physiotherapy. You can follow the campaign on the Pedro webpage, blog or social media.